ISIS are more than just ghosts out here in the dust of eastern Syria and top leaders. And last symbolic territory are in the distance hunted under cover of darkness by these Syrian Kurdish fighters pummeled by coalition air power and pushed back towards the Iraqi border. Dark means chaos here, but above, it's a lethal advantage for American technology. That were an Apache attack helicopter finding its target. These are rare pictures of the daring nighttime operations that have taken back swathes of land from ISIS. It is startling to see how rudimentary the tools are in a fight so essential to the world. Triage by phone light, saline solution and dressings. How young the fighters are. This one apparently deafened by shelling. Can you talk? They ask him. The dead, those who survived as walking wounded. And those in need of urgent surgery begin a long journey to better care through a night sky that still echoes with the sound of further deaths. Lurking below in these remaining villages could be ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, defended by die-hard loyalists and foreigners and car bombs. The street-to-street -street battle, as ferocious as before, but unseen by a world who have believed President Donald Trump when he says ISIS has been defeated. Their holdouts around the village of Susa still grip onto what they have as daytime brings a new set of challenges. ISIS mortars close in. Up on the roof, ISIS snipers pin them down. It is startling how this chaotic and young force, loosely in control of their weapons, have got so far. Then the constant in this war, American air power, behind both its advances and much of its destruction intervenes. Uncle Trump never disappoints, he says. Yet this sheer force can't answer the key question of how to handle the civilians who gave ISIS shelter and members in the long term. The biggest battle, he says, is going to be freeing the people from ISIS's way of thinking. They've been dragged here by ISIS from their former capital, Raqqa, but they still think ISIS will come back one day and give them a caliphate again. This family say they risked arrest by ISIS, who only fled this afternoon. I was in a refugee camp, he says, but ISIS surrounded and imprisoned. Yet it's impossible to balance their immediate human needs with what their real sympathies may be. They asked this old man, why didn't he die in the airstrikes? It's in the hands of God, whether I live or die, he says. And so they return, like thousands of others, to the camps behind the front line where ISIS's victims and possible future flag bearers form a well of suffering and hatred that will smolder across these plains for years to come. Nick Payton Walsh, CNN.